Over the last century, Topps has become the industry leading producer of collectible baseball cards, with values skyrocketing over the past few years. The story of how Topps became this icon of trading cards is quite ironic, because their intention was really to sell bubblegum. Topps was founded in 1938 by brothers Abram, Ira, Philip, and Joseph Shoren. The brothers were trying to revitalize the Shoren family's tobacco business by starting a new venture in creating Topps Chewing Gum. The name Topps was actually borrowed from a small Chattanooga candy company that they purchased, and the name became their mission, to be the top selling chewing gum brand. This would be accomplished, but not in the same field as they originally planned. During the 1940s, chewing gum was sold in individual pieces. At this point, Topps' most successful early product was Bazooka Bubblegum, which was packaged with a comic strip on the wrapper. The very first Topps cards appeared in 1949 and were packaged inside packs of gum. These cards were a set of 252 magic photo cards that revealed a picture when they were wet and exposed to light. Among the set were 19 baseball greats, including Babe Ruth and Cy Young. Starting in 1950, the company decided to try and increase gum sales again by packaging them together with another trading card featuring the fictional cowboy Hopalong Cassidy. Topps then produced its first baseball cards in two different sets known as Redbacks and Bluebacks in 1951. Each set contained 52 cards, like a deck of playing cards, and the cards could be used to play a game that would simulate the events of a baseball game. The cards had rounded corners and were blank on one side, which was colored either red or blue. The other side featured the portrait of a player within a baseball diamond and an action such as fly out or single. The redbacks and bluebacks were packaged with taffy instead of bubblegum. 1952 became the year that catapulted tops and effectively began the modern era of baseball cards. This was the year that tops began issuing annual sets of baseball cards. Topps executive Cy Berger is credited with transforming Topps into a powerhouse by designing a set of cards with colorful, up-close photographs of the players, facsimile autographs, team logos, hard-to-come-by statistics, and many biographies. He accomplished this with the help of graphic artist Woody Gelman, and they came up with a 407 player set that was released throughout the year in six series. Over time, millions of youngsters began purchasing packages in search of their favorite players and began trading with friends to fill out their sets. Everyone, however, was in search of the elusive young player from Oklahoma named Mickey Mantle. Innovation continued to drive Topps' dominance, pushing them past Bowman as the leader in trading cards. They also began expanding into other sports, producing hockey cards for the first time in 1954. Topps settled on the standard 2.5 inch by 3.5 inch card size in 1955. As the company pressed on, they acquired Bowman in 1956, which is also when Topps began producing football trading cards. Throughout the 1960s and 1970s, Topps fended off challenges from other companies like Fleer and Leaf 
as well as some regional card producers. But in 1980, after a Monopoly lawsuit, other card companies were allowed to compete. This is when Upper Deck, Fleer, Donruss, and Score became MLB licensees. Card collecting entered a golden age as each company attempted to outdo the other, and interest in sports memorabilia was running rampant. In 1992, after listening to complaints about the gum and wax staining the collectible cards, Topps made the decision to remove the gum from their packs. They also switched over to white cardstock and began sealing the cards in plastic wrap to help ensure the value was maintained. The oversaturation of the market from the various producers of collectible cards, coupled with the cancellation of the 1994 World Series, led to a dramatic decline in interest among collectors. Baseball card sales plummeted from a high of $1.5 billion in 1992 to around $200 million by 2008. During this time, several companies went out of business, but Topps still remained. Topps has continued to capitalize on new technologies, and that, coupled with emerging new stars of the sport, have helped to revive sports car trading. Today, Topps continues to thrive, with collecting becoming even more lucrative. The collectors of today now face an explosion of popularity, which has been driving prices upward. Many collectors even make it their business to buy and sell cards online. This has made Topps a very profitable company, and it still remains on top, having recently had some of their best years in sales. So what do you think? Is it time to climb into the attic and dust off that box of old cards to see if you've got a 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle card? If you do, it may be valued at over $5 million.